Hi there and welcome back. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Clarice and I am out in a pine forest today. I was looking for some pine cones previously and I found something else that I thought was quite interesting. Um, something that we actually have some cool uses for and I thought I'd backtrack to it to show it to you. me I have got the remains of a porcupine and I thought I would come and show you how you can make a needle out of a porcupine pool in order to sew up some gear if you've got to do gear repairs. Now porcupines have gotten a bad rap with the farming community because they gnaw through water pipes and fences and crops and then the farming community has in turn started hunting porcupines so there's a little bit of controversy about buying porcupine quills in the store um, because we don't know where those porcupine quills have come from and we can't guarantee that they've been picked up off the ground and that the animal hasn't actually in fact been killed for its porcupine quills or just because it's considered a nuisance. Contrary to what people might believe porcupines don't shoot their quills they actually turn around um, facing away from whatever is threatening them but they'll usually give a warning they'll usually rattle their quills or stomp their feet before they charge backwards um, into whatever is threatening them and the porcupine quills come out of the porcupine really easily but they're quite difficult to remove from skin or flesh or from yourself porcupines are nocturnal feeders and what they do is they come out at night and they forage um, roots and bulbs and shrubs and things that they eat but they're messy they only take like two or three bites out of one thing and then discard it and move on to the next thing so they leave quite a path of destruction behind them when they're feeding um, and they never really quite finish their food and that's also why they've become such an irritation to the farmers because they can go through a crop quite quickly that way Historically, porcupine intestines have been used to make traditional medicine and their quills have been used to apply that traditional medicine. There are also some peoples who see porcupine meat as a delicacy and who have hunted porcupines for their meat as well. Okay, so now this is, is obviously a bit manky. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take out my medical kit which I have in my bag I am just going to clean off the worst of the grime from it and um, then we'll take them and I'll go show you how you can make a needle to sew with a porcupine quill. Okay. If you have a bit of cotton wool and a um, little bottle of rubbing alcohol, cotton wool, and this is a 91% solution alcohol, it's just alcohol hand rub. And I'm actually not going to use all of that, I'm just going to put it aside. make sure that I don't get a whole bunch of bacteria and stuff coming on it and a 91% alcohol solution will definitely give you a clean quilt. Okay. And if you're smart you'll use these, keep them and use them as tinder later. Now let me just tell you, you should be really grateful that you can't smell this because it does actually smell quite gross. I'm just going to lift those up, these nice thick ones over here, see that comes out quite gross. That is stinky. And as I said, just be very careful when moving around here so you don't end up injuring yourself. Because I'm just going to collect a couple of these, 
So I've got some to keep. And then make sure that you clean your hands nicely as well afterwards. So these are my porcupine quills and I will show you how you can use them to make a needle to sew with. With these quills that I've collected I can now sit down and do some gear repairs. I just need to find a nice place to sit um, and make up a little workspace for myself. And I think this might do. Yeah, that'll do. So this is my canteen cup and as you can see there's a, a bit of a hole torn in it um, because the bottom clip like this has ripped out. And I've been racking my brain trying to think how I'm going to fix that and what I'm going to do about it. Um, and since I haven't decided on a button yet, what I am going to do is I'm just going to sew a temporary patch on there to make sure it doesn't rip any further or get damaged anymore. We'll just take this out. This is my little um, sewing kit, emergency sewing kit. Okay, so this is the quill I'm going to use. I am going to halve it and then I'll make a um, score a little hole in it that I can actually use to um, thread the or put the thread through. So I'm just going to give myself some space to work with. Oops. Want that piece. I'm going to keep this for later. Okay, and then I'm going to halve it. the ant taking a piece of the quill. Now I'm essentially left with what I could call two needles. They are a little bit um, floppy but then what I'll do is I'll score a little hole in this one. I'm going to put this one through it. just makes a space for my thread to go into. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mend this, starting from the inside. And I just want to make a knot there so that it stays. And there you have it. From there on, you can sew and repair any gear that needs to be repaired.
Just in case you were wondering, in Afrikaans, we call a porcupine an eistervark. And eistervark, when you translate it directly to English, means iron pig. I think it's quite apt. Not something you want to mess with. I think that is sufficiently mended, at least until I decide what button I'm going to put on there and whether I'm going to change all of that over. Um, I've just put my needle in here and I'm going to keep it for later if I need it again. That's all from me on sewing with porcupine quills. If you want more, go have a look at our website, liveready.co.za. There's a free emergency survival guide on there. You can download it. It's got tons of information in it. And follow us on Instagram. And until the next time when I see you in the wilderness, keep well.